Hey everyone, there's been so much chatter on social media. Of course, we're right in the middle of it, so sorry about that. Um, actually, not sorry. But I wanted to give you a quick update on the pet food issues that we have been reporting over the last couple of weeks, just so that you know where we are. Because the biggest complaint that we're getting from people is that we are not giving you enough information. Well, we're giving you what we have, and I want to explain what we're doing and how long it takes to get the information that we need to share. So, um, somewhere around January 2nd or 3rd, I received a message from Kelly Bone, who is the administrator and originator of a Facebook page called Saving Pets One at a Time. If you don't know Kelly, her dog, her service dog, died five years ago from uh, tainted pet food with too much vitamin D in it made by Hills. It was a prescription diet and her dog died two weeks before the recall was uh, issued and she headed up the class action lawsuit against Hills uh, which did result in a settlement for pet owners. And she vowed after her dog died that she was never going to allow this to happen to another pet and hence she started saving pets one at a time as a uh, hub really where people could come and report issues with illness or problems, whether it had to do with flea and tick medications, heartworm medications, vaccinations, pet food, and just really wanted a, a an area where people could come together and talk. And she has nine veterinarians that are admins on that site to help answer questions and help people work through any issues or side effects that they might be seeing. So on January 3rd, Kelly reached out, or second, she reached out to us and said, hey, I think I have a problem here. Since the beginning of December, I am seeing a lot of posts with the same symptoms from animals that are eating Purina pet food, both cats and dogs, and they're having very similar symptoms, vomiting, diarrhea, hemorrhaging, seizures, extreme itching, hives, and death. And she said, there's been way too many. There's been a huge uptick and I don't know what to do with this. Do I keep quiet? Do I ask questions? What do I do? So on January 3rd, we posted our first awareness graphic and took a ton of backlash, as you might imagine. On January 5th, I did a live talk on food safety and let you know that we personally went out and purchased four different different Purina products, both cat and dog, and we sent them out for testing. Now, when we're sending out for testing, we don't know what we're testing for. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. So on January 8th, we gave you a live update. You can find it on our YouTube channel. And our theory at that point was that we had a supplier issue because we started seeing reports from pet owners from other types of pet food. And now that list has grown and these are pet parent consumer reports of bloody diarrhea, vomiting, lethargy, pet uh, food refusal, um, and those brands now include Four Health, Akana, Blue Buffalo, Hills, Instinct, Kirkland, Merrick, Origin, Organics, Pure Balance, Purina, pretty much every one of their subsets, Royal Canin, Stella and Chewy's, and Taste of the Wild. We got a lot of backlash when we posted some of these pet foods that are generally thought to be maybe a little bit higher in quality. I understand that because that's been your go-to and you are really trying to do a really good job and feed the best food that you can and what has been recommended to you by your veterinarians. I get it. But what I can tell you is the vast majority of foods that have uh, side effects that have been reported have been with Purina products. So as of yesterday, there have been 976 sick or deceased dogs and cats eating Purina products. 234 of those have resulted in deaths, and this is only what has been reported on saving pets one at a time. So I am sure there are a lot of people who have no idea that there is anything to be watching for. And the problem is the veterinarians are doing lab work and x-rays, and they're not finding a cause. All we have is liquid blood pouring out of both ends of dogs and cats. Interestingly, I was just at a veterinary conference. I was talking to some veterinarians, and one of them said to me, me, oh my gosh, 
I just had a family that brought in a whole fam all their cats and they were all vomiting blood and we couldn't find anything on the lab work or the x-rays. I'm going back to my practice tomorrow and I'm going to find out what those pets were eating. So I'm trying to open eyes to look and see and to be vigilant. All I want all I want is for pet parents to be vigilant and say, wow, my animal, I opened this box or bag and they really don't want to eat it unless I really doctor it up. They used to eat it, but now they're just, they're, they're really not interested. Or suddenly they're vomiting when they're eating the food. Or I've been back and forth to the veterinarian 10 times in the last two months with my animal with diarrhea and unexplained vomiting. We keep getting medication. We put them on a bland diet. We put them back on the pet food and the symptoms come right back. Please just switch. Just switch for now. We don't know where this is going to end up and maybe you'll be able to go back to your trusted brand with no issues. So as of today, we have sent out samples. We sent them out on January 8th. We are still waiting on test results, but we are testing. And right now we just have to throw Every, everything on the wall and see what sticks and see what happens. But we don't have those results. It takes weeks to get results back. And once we get those results, we can't just start publishing, this is it, this is it. We are going to have to verify that with many, many, many samples. This is not a one-time deal, folks. This is, and so please don't get mad at us for not telling you this is exactly what it is and this is exactly what's causing it and, and this is exactly which bag or which lot number because there are so many at this point, there's no way we could, we could tell you all of them. And if I give you lot numbers that have been sent to us, you may go by a different lot number and think you're safe. And I don't know if you are. You may be, you may not be. So the FDA response at this point is that they are aware of some pet complaints, pet consumer complaints. I sent in a FOIA request. I got an answer from them saying, due to the high volume of FOIA requests, which is Freedom of Information Act request, asking for any and all consumer complaints against any pet food or pet treat within whatever specified period of time you want to ask for. It's very easy to ask for that for your request. And uh, I put a rush on mine and they told me that they have up to 20 days to send that to me. And, but with the high volume, it could be more than that. And Susan Thixton has sometimes waited months and months and some of her FOIA requests, it's been years and she's never gotten an answer. So we shall see. Purina's response, I'm pretty sure most of you have seen that at this point. They are blaming it on Rachel Fusaro and me. They couldn't possibly be responsible for all these animals with bloody diarrhea, vomiting, lethargy, food refusal, seizures, itching, and death. Not them. Um, so I don't know how I am responsible for this. I, I have free recipes free. You don't have to spend a dime. I do not own a pet food company. I do not own any interest in a pet food company. I have over 10 brands on my list of foods that I actually feed my own pets. I don't even feed just one food to my pets. By the way, I don't feed kibble to my pets. So that is, that is a big takeaway right there for you. And next week, funny timing on this is the AFCO meeting. The, animal, the American Association of Feed Control Officials. Their meeting is next week. I am not going because I would probably get shot. However, um, we do have friends that will be there, so we'll, we'll find out what's being talked about. Uh, I bet there will be a lot of hubbub about this, and I bet there will be a lot of denial, just like there has been. New York Times posted a hit piece on Rachel Fusaro. It was so one-sided. They didn't interview anyone other than Purina. That is not good news reporting, folks, by the way. A Tampa news station uh, did a very, very unbiased report. We are very grateful for that. A uh, NBC did a digital piece today on this. Um, they were fairly balanced. I wasn't horribly upset with it. I was mentioned in it. Mm. Um, but that's okay. Uh, so if you believe that any brand of pet food is causing or has to cause illness or death in one or more of your pets, please report it to the FDA. Contact your veterinarian. Request a copy of your pet's medical records. Report your concerns to the pet food company where you purchase the food. 
uh, and the maker of the manufacturer of the food. And ask your veterinarian to do the same. They may or may not be willing to do that. They're very busy and usually we don't get much cooperation unless the veterinarian really thinks that the food is the culprit, which right now we are getting a lot of pushback on that. So um, I'm just here to report statistics and news, folks. It's all I'm doing. All I'm saying is 976. Prune is leading the leading the parade here. I'm not sure that's a good place to be.